Hello, and welcome to the Your Town Television Program. My name is Joy Anderson, and I'll be your host today. I have three guests with me this afternoon, and my first guest today will be Eileen Groves, who is the owner of Bookkeeping Express of Monterey County. Welcome, Eileen. Thanks, Joy. I'm glad to be here. Fantastic. Well, Bookkeeping Express. Let's talk about Bookkeeping Express because I think it's a, a fantastic little business. And um, Now, this is a franchise, is that correct? That's correct. I own the rights to Monterey County for the franchise, and the main headquarters are located in Washington, D.C. Oh, okay. Um, so how did you learn about this franchise? I mean, did, I'm sure you looked into different things. Absolutely. I, I think you well know that I came out of a corporate environment and I was looking for uh, a business to open in Monterey County, California, mainly because my husband and I had fallen in love with Monterey County because my corporate um, job had taken me out here so many times that it felt like a second home. In fact, I told my sister I used to get off the plane and I felt like, man, this is really comfortable. I, lo I loved coming back here over and over again. So knowing that we wanted to be out here when we retired, we decided that rather than wait until we retired, we would find a business we could open out here so we could be where we wanted to retire when we were ready to do so. Oh, smart thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Plus the housing market, you remember in 09 and 08, they had, it was very favorable to come mm -hmm. out here and buy a home. And so there was all kinds of things in our favor to do it at that time. So in 2010, I engaged a business coach. I thought, okay, I don't know what I want to do, but I have an idea of where I want to be and how much money I want to spend and what kind of money I need to make and what kind of hours I want to put in every day. Um, so I found a business coach. She was actually in Kansas City and we worked together on the phone for about six weeks. We had a lot of assigned reading, tests to do, grids to fill out. And in the end, she came back with seven suggestions for me. I was floored that she found seven different business models that I could possibly do and fit all the criteria I had given her. Uh, we went on discovery days. If you know anything about franchising, that's the way that they determine whether or not you're a right good for, fit for them right. and vice versa. Has to go both ways. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, at the end, Bookkeeping Express of Monterey County became our choice. Uh, it was something that would use all of my corporate background to help small business owners, and it provided me with the variety I was looking for. And I know that sounds strange. You think, how could there be variety in bookkeeping? <laughs> but uh, all of my bookkeepers are actually uh, provided to me by the franchisor, and they sit in a centralized location in Newport News, Virginia. So the transactional work is being done by people who want to sit in front of a computer all day long and input data. The relationship building, the, the coaching, the discussions about what your business is, what do you want it to be, that all falls in my lap here locally as the customer relationship liaison person for that business owner with my team in Virginia. That's where the variety comes in. Every time the phone rings, it's somebody with a different business model who's calling to me to ask if I will talk to them about bookkeeping services. And I think, isn't this cool? I'm gonna learn about a new business today. There is an amazing number of ways you can earn a living in this world, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some of which I am just absolutely enthralled with because they're all very interesting. Basic concepts are the same. You still have to follow the same rules, right. but how you earn your money, what you spend your money on, where you find your clients, all different I've for been, every yeah. different business. Yeah, it was, it's fun. That's fascinating because, you know, when... You, when I first learned about it with Bookkeeping Express, I go, oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm not a numbers person. Yes. You know, that, that, that right side brain thing just, like, gets in the way. But um, the networking, you just, you know. So how, you know, when you first came here, okay, you're, you're transplanted from, yes. you know, really, what, the Midwest? Toledo, Ohio. Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> uh, and so you get here. So as a, a new business owner, a new resident, you know, how did you just get started? I know you've become very successful, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but, you know, what are the first steps, you know, if you were to really engage people that are thinking of doing, you know, kind of the similar type of thing or changing careers, whatever it might be, um, what are some of the tips that you can give somebody looking to start? How, how do you get going? Um, I think it's funny in the sense that it's a good thing I didn't know what I didn't know because... <laughs> <laughs> when I first got here and started meeting people and they all heard me say the same thing, hi, I just arrived here 
from Toledo, Ohio. I've started a brand new business, and of course, nobody had ever heard of it before. I was uh -huh. the first franchise owner here in California. Um, and it was in an industry which requires immense trust be between me and my client. They give me access to all their bank accounts, their social security numbers. They provide me with very private financial information, mm -hmm. right? And you don't give that to strangers. No. So literally from the get-go, people were saying to me, you're going to have a hard time. This isn't going to be what you think it is. This is a very close-knit area. People work with and, and deal with people they know and trust. Mm -hmm. They don't know you. And I'm just stubborn enough to say failure was not an option for me. So <laughs> I decided that if that's what people needed, that they had to know me and trust me, then that's what I was going to set out to do. So when you're first starting a business, you have more time than you have clients. True. Mm -hmm. So I invested that time in providing everyone in the community an idea of who I was, what I stood for, what my my plans were, that I wasn't going anywhere, that I was going to stay here permanently now. I wasn't just passing through. Mm -hmm. Uh, what my background was, what my ethics were. And that is demonstrated more through what you do than what you say. So I started to volunteer for organizations. I joined chambers. I joined professional women's groups. I started networking with people who could introduce me to other people that I needed to know because I didn't know who the movers and the shakers were. I had right. no idea who the key people were in my industry here. It's amazing how much time I spend over a cup of coffee learning amazing things from people. And I honestly thank everybody who said to my invitation, sure, I can meet you for an hour. Mm -hmm. Because without all those people saying yes, and me having that ability to tap in their brains and find out who they know and get two more referrals from them of two more people I could have coffee with, it would have taken me much longer than it actually did to get launched and get those first clients in the door. Um, I would say that, that probably if somebody is going to start a new business and think they're going to do it by getting on Facebook every day and s putting things mm -hmm. out on the internet or spending an unbelievable amount of time on their website, they're probably going to be sorely disappointed because people love relationships and that happens from FaceTime. It doesn't happen from Facebook time. No. No. I mean, Facebook, you know, sometimes gives you... Um, open some doors for you, mm -hmm. but once you get in the door, <laughs> it's space time and it's boots on the ground. It's really, a lot of it's grassroots. It's grassroots marketing. I mean, get out there and, and show people what you're all about. And that's, I know that's exactly what you did because I remember when I first met you, I mean, you were new as new could be. And then now it's just like you say, Eileen Griffiths. And go, oh, yeah, we know Eileen. And Eileen <laughs> does this and she's involved in this. And, you know, for for us as a small community, the community involvement is critical. It really is. And I will be more than happy to talk to anybody who wants to talk to me. I understand how important it was for me when I first started. Mm -hmm. Anyone who wants to just spend an hour with me, I you don't even have to buy my cup of coffee. I'll buy my own and I'll be happy <laughs> to talk to you about anything that you need to know. I love connecting people, mm -hmm. and the Chamber Ambassador team has been wonderful in that respect, and I uh, have not only made great friends with the Ambassador team, but I love the fact that everybody's attitude is, how can I introduce you to somebody that will help you? I know people you don't know. Let me find those people for you. Yeah, what a great connection, and helpful helpful connections. I mean, not just, you know, here's here's a bunch of names, go at it. I mean, the introductions are made for you, which is, you know, very rare to oh, find. Oh, that warm you know. introduction yeah. is imper oh, really absolutely. important. It's more than collecting business cards. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you can fill a shoebox full of these things <laughs> and then, yeah, and then look at them once a year. So now you've, you've had the business for five years? We so opened, uh, five, it'll be six years, May 1st. Six years, May 1st. Fantastic. Mm. And how have you grown the business? Okay, tell us kind of, give us a feel for, you know, how things have gone for you. Well, initially I tried all kinds of things. I tried um, Comcast Cable Spotlight, I tried print ads, I tried radio spots mm. with Mapleton Communications, I think, uh, at the time. Um, I was just trying everything out to see what would float, mm -hmm. so to speak. But when I figured out that my clients were coming to me through the people I was meeting, I just abandoned all of that and really just started asking people who they knew. Mm -hmm. And the phone started ringing and those clients introduced me to other clients and exponentially things happened. Um, it was not 
as fast. I'm not a patient person. I'm one of these people who <laughs> who, who prays, uh, Lord, I want patience, but give it to me now. Now, uh-huh. uh huh. So I was disappointed, absolutely. But I know that if I just stick with the plan, mm -hmm. that's what's going to get me to the finish line, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what happened. Uh, those numbers just kept doubling and doubling and doubling. And about six months ago, I had to hire a full-time assistant so that I could continue to go out there and spend the time in the community where I wanted to be making, f meeting people and getting those introductions because I knew that if I abandoned my plan and decided to instead stay in the office and get the paperwork moving, that I was not going to continue to grow the business at the rate I had been. And I didn't want to stop. No. Um, I have found such joy in helping people with their numbers. Their numbers tell them a story. And granted, there are some people who um, tell a fantasy story, and those are the people that we hear about that are in jail. But <laughs> as long as my clients and I have this honest uh, relationship going back and forth, I'm going to make sure that their numbers are true. It tells them what they need to know. It gives them some perspective, and it also gives all the other financial partners in their business the, the information they, knew, they need in order to also counsel this small business owner. I'm only a small piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. When I meet with a prospect, I want to know if they have a good banker that they trust. Do they have a good tax preparer, a financial advisor, or a CPA mm -hmm. in their lives? They have to have that full package. And if I do my job right, all those other financial advisors have the information they need to really provide solid information to a business in order for that business to continue to thrive. Mm -hmm. um, that's perfect. That's my job and I love it. So, Bookkeeping Express, if I use Bookkeeping Express, I can just hand you my shoebox worth of receipts for this month and then you just kind of figure it out. Is that how it works? I mean, it that's has, how I work. It can, <laughs> it can work that way, but we prefer more electronic communication. Okay, yeah, I sure. work with a lot of my clients through the uh, th remotely. Mm -hmm. uh, I have third party access to their bank and credit card accounts so that I can't transact anything, but I can pull all the information that's in that shoebox okay. and then the shoebox becomes your backup for any audits that may happen right. down the road. I don't need the pieces of paper. I just need the information that's on those okay. pieces of paper. So can you work with people that use like QuickBooks? Is that so my, one of the easiest ways? My staff is uh, certified uh, in QuickBooks and another software system called Xero, but it's spelled X-E-R-O. Okay. Those are the two big ones out there. Um, those are the ones that I encourage my, my clients to use because it gives us cloud-based access and it allows everybody who needs access to those mm -hmm. numbers, their CPA, th my team in Virginia, me locally, and the business owner, we all have access 24-7 to the information that is needed in order to make the decisions that are really important to that business owner. That's fantastic. And then you you got an honor. Uh, what year was that uh, oh, for the Franchise of the Year? In, yes. In early 2013, they named me Franchise of the Year for 2012 due to the, the growth that I had experienced so quickly. And they, again, honored me not just for that, but for my involvement in the community. They want to see the franchise owners really become someone that's known and trusted in their community, mm -hmm. not just somebody who gets the job done. Uh, the, the reason being, of course, that... Um, you're known by the company you keep and the more I can align myself with those other entities in the community that are business minded, mm -hmm. that are helping the small business owners, the more my reputation gets enhanced and of course I have to follow that up with doing good work and sure. following through on my promises. One of the first things that I have to do with any, any prospective client when I meet with them is help them do an assessment of all their resources and then figure out where I fit into the needs of that business. And if I don't, if I'm not able to help them with everything that they need, then that's another good reason why I have all those business contacts because then I can refer them to people that will do the things that I don't do but are still necessary for that business mm -hmm. owner. You're right. He needs to spend his time concentrating on revenue producing activities and let all the experts in the other areas that need to be done in his business, just take that off of his plate and allow him to concentrate on what he does best. So Eileen, what I'm hearing from you, and I know I hear this from a lot of business owners, is you know, well, I don't, I don't have time to get out there and talk to people. I don't have time to network. I don't have time to get out there and be involved in the community. But exactly what you were saying, you hired somebody to take the helm of, of doing those things, answering the phone and 
taking messages and mailing things out or emailing things and and you have time to be out in the community and you know and I think that's the message that we're trying to tell people you've got to take that time whether it's an hour a day or whatever to get out there and be involved because that's how you grow your business and how many times have people told you they weren't renewing their chamber membership because they didn't get anything out mm -hmm. of it and they're the same people who never show up at anything mm -hmm. so I always tell people who say I'm gonna so I'm gonna join the chamber I'll, I say to them that's awesome but show up. Mm -hmm. You can't just sign up. Mm -hmm. Getting your name on the Chamber website is not going to be the, the rubber stamp that you're looking for. No. And you know the thing about it too is you don't have to go to every single thing, no. every event, every networking opportunity, but you've got to make an effort to at least, you know, come to a few things. You would be surprised how many contacts you can make by spending an hour with a group of people. Because somebody's going to grab your arm and say, oh, you need to meet this person and this person, and, and that's what it's all about. You're not going to do it on your own. Like you said, you need help with resources and other folks to help you make those uh, those inroads to, to meeting new people. And don't be afraid to raise your hand and say, I, I, I need, I, help, I need I, help. I don't know. Because... It, I guess it was probably easier for me because I was new. I was able to pull the newbie card a lot. I was able to say, <laughs> I'm new here. Yeah. Help me out. Help me. Yeah. And, and maybe somebody who's been here a long time might feel awkward doing that same thing, but that's exactly how you're going to get the context that you need. If you go to a function and stand in a corner with somebody you've known for 25 years, you're not going to get out of that function exactly what you would get out of it if you were to approach somebody you don't know and start a conversation mm -hmm. and find out what they know that you could use. And a lot of people will say, oh, you know, I don't carry a, a really good conversation. I'm not good at talking to people. It's like, but you know, listen to people. Get their business cards and then maybe follow up later with a phone call or an email and said, you know, your business really interested me. So, you know, what? it's it's just fantastic to learn about all the different things that you've gone through in the last, what, six years or so that you've been here. and. I commend you for, you know, the work that you've done in the community and I thank you so much for, you know, for just being there for everybody and we always just miss, wish you so much success in your business and I know you you don't need a lot of help with that now. I think you've mastered that, but but um, now it's my turn to help other people exactly do the same thing. Yes, and and help them grow their business. And at the same time, yours grows at the same time. And, you know, we're all in this together. We want our, our community to thrive. And that's how we're going to do it, to, you know, to be able to help each other along and, and coach each other and be supporters. So, And the other thing that I'd like to tell people who are about the networking aspect of this is you're not just talking to the person in front of you. You're talking to everybody they know. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Eileen. It's been a pleasure as always, and uh, we'll be back in just a few more minutes with our next guest.